Chapter 1. The Slow Motion Thing The first time I see her, following Mary Agnes Brady out of Peas and Pickles at 3.47 on Wednesday afternoon in the second week of March, the slow motion thing happens. It's like the pause button's been pushed on everything I see. The image, a beautiful girl with butterfly braids snapping back the tab on a can of ginger ale, freezes for a millisecond. After the sound of the can's sharp pop and the little breath of fizz that follows it, time stops and I think, who is that incredible girl? Then the picture comes to life again, but slowly, one frame at a time, as if an invisible thumb has pushed play without unpausing. So slowly that I don't miss a single detail. From the mist of carbonation that sprays into the air and disappears, to the puzzled look on the girl's face as she pulls the inch-long wrapper off the bent tip of the straw, to the shy smile that spreads across her face as she takes the first sip. Then she says, mmm, and licks her lips like she's never tasted ginger ale in her life. Nomura and I are in a long line of kids from St. Cat's and St. Chris's waiting to pay for our food, and Mary Agnes is walking out of the store backward like a tour guide pointing to snacks near the cash register and explaining the names, prices, and pros and cons of Three Musketeers, Fuji Apples, and Fritos. She enunciates each syllable as if speaking to a child or to someone hard of hearing. The girl doesn't mind, though. She's paying close attention, nodding every few seconds, hungry for information. Her uniform is brand new. Her shirt, its collar stiff with starch, is whiter than Mary Agnes's and not only because it stands out against her skin. Her red plaid skirt is brighter too, and her patent leather saddle shoes are as shiny as mirrors, not a scratch on them. Every piece of clothing on her looks like it was bought in the last 48 hours. As usual, Mary Agnes is talking nonstop, and the girl looks like she has to concentrate to keep up. Every time she nods, her braids do a little dance, shimmying like a grass skirt before coming to rest. At at the end of each braid sits a tiny purple bead in the shape of a butterfly. I wonder if she twists her hair into braids herself, or if she has someone else do it for her. I wonder whether she can sleep with the beads on. And if she took the butterflies off, would the braids just unravel? I don't normally notice stuff like this. I only do when the the slow motion thing happens, which is not something I choose or have any control of whatsoever. Someone else is controlling it. It's like God or somebody is saying, pay attention, this is important. Then time speeds up again, although I feel like I'm still two seconds behind. Who's that? I whispered to Nomura. He doesn't even hear me. I have to say it twice because he's reading something on his phone and dipping into a bag of Utz chips we haven't paid for yet. Who's who? He answers at last, his lips forming a round O. Everything about Nomura is round. His moon-shaped face, his black ball-cut hair, Even his glasses are all circles so perfect, they look like they've been drawn with a compass. Do you want a microphone, I whisper, praying none of the girls can hear us? Nomura is as loud as he is circular. (laughs) Mary Agnes is still lecturing the girl. That black girl, he asks, pointing. I don't know, I've never seen her before. I pay for Nomura's chips and my Butterfinger, and Mr. Lau, the old man who owns peas and pickles, slaps my change on the counter like he's placing a bet in a Chinese poker game. A loud metal on Formica slap. Then the girls are out the door, too fast for me to say hello or to do anything else that will help me meet that beautiful girl. She must be new, I say. We would have seen her before. She's cute, Namora says. Really cute. I saw her first, I say. Slow down, cowboy, Namora says. All I said was she's cute, but if you want to chase after her, go right ahead. She's out of your league, and she'll probably break your heart into a million pieces, but if that's what you're after, she's all yours. (laughs) By the time we're out of the store, the girls are past Pineapple Street, probably on their way to the subway. They're walking in regular time, their hard-heeled shoes clicking musically against the concrete. Nothing slow and mow about it. But I know that something has happened, something worth paying attention to something monumental. I need to find out who that girl is, where she came from, 
and why I've never seen her before, even though Nomura and I know, or at least know of, all 44 girls in the 7th and 8th grade classes at St. Catherine's School for Girls. Somehow I know that the answers to these questions are going to change my life forever. <laughs>